This video will deal with noise. All right, now that's a, a, a pretty, uh, pretty comprehensive subject. So let's think about this. If we have a bunch of atoms over here, and they're at absolute zero, and we know something at absolute zero, they're not moving. But let's assume that, that we uh, somehow or another contain these atoms in a box and start to heat them up. When these atoms get agitated, and they start bumping into each other. And when they bump into each other, they start to generate noise. Now, I want to introduce uh, a term called noise temperature. So if we have a resistor, and which has atoms, and we somehow or another excite them, uh, i.e. we put past some current in them, these atoms start moving around and getting hot and making noise. And if we could capture this noise, uh, <clears throat> we could then plot uh, the power generated by these agitated atoms and the equivalent temperature. So we, we have called, we have now developed a term called the equivalent temperature. Now, <clears throat> so so now let's go back to this uh, group of atoms over here. Uh, back in the 18th century, a guy by the name of Planck figured out and started to quantify the noise coming out of this, coming out of the, uh, all atoms that are above absolute zero. And uh, in his quantifications, he, he figured out that the power generated the power generated by uh, uh, by these agitated items atoms was equal to some constant times the absolute temperature times the bandwidth at which you observed observed these atoms and this is uh, this turns out to be uh, one of the critical formulas that's in a radio engineer's toolbox the power is equal to KBT. It turns out that the K is equal to Boltzmann's constant. And, uh, and <clears throat> so now we can calculate uh, we can calculate the power of, uh, of agitated atoms. Now let's think about this as a practical communication system. And let's take a very simple communication system where we have a an antenna, uh, let's say it's a dish, and it's connected to a receiver. Let's assume that this is an ideal receiver, is that the receiver itself doesn't generate any noise, and, and the antenna is an ideal antenna, and it doesn't generate any noise. But guess what? An antenna looks into something. It looks into either the warm earth or a star or something. So there's a cloud out here. Let's assume that this cloud is much larger than the beam width of this antenna. In other words, we have an antenna out there that, that this thing is totally the major loop or the major lobe on that antenna is looking into this cloud. Well, it turns out that this receiver will uh, pick up the, the energy generated by these agitated atoms, and and uh, we can we can now know what uh, we can now know exactly how much power is generated by an ideal antenna looking at a theoretical cloud of some temperature. Well, let's assume that this is saying is looking into the warm Earth. You know, this antenna is a is pointed at the horizon, it sees the Earth, and the Earth, we, uh, we think of the Earth as uh, basically about 30 degrees C, which is equal to 300 degrees Kelvin. So now <clears throat> the power that's generated by, by uh, this equation, by this warm cloud at a receiver is equal to Boltzmann constant which is 
times 10 to the minus 23 times the bandwidth. Let's assume that the bandwidth is, uh, is 1 hertz. And let's assume that uh, we know the temperature, we said, was 300 degrees Kelvin. If you do the math and you do this and uh, express it in decibels, this comes to be minus 174 dBm. So every time, every time you uh, increase the bandwidth, you increase the amount of power you can receive. 